I wanted to talk to you about a specific issue. Um, yep. I know you on your podcast and you do a great job with your podcast on the Loaded Bases podcast. You do a lot of interviews with with minor league players. Um, I was showing you the bat that you had uh, sent yes, over sir. to me. That was from your guy, uh, a double A player in the national yep. system. Um, and I, I know you're really in tune. You also do some work with uh, more than bases that more than bases that organization. And there was an article that Paston had put out um, on in ESPN a couple of days ago is that Major yep. League Baseball is now going to require teams to provide housing for minor league players starting in 2020. Yes. Talk to me about this. I know this is super important to you. I think it is to me as well. Um, what were your initial thoughts on this when you when you heard the news? That's it's it's a huge huge step. Like I mean, like for baseball, like in general. Cause my, I mean, like, cause my thing, like, why, like, for, as an MLB team, why won't you provide your farm system, which is the future of your team, mm-hmm. the the essentials and the necessities to be successful in the field? I mean, because if you're off the field and you're worrying about like where you're gonna sleep, like what you're gonna eat, then you're not really totally focused on what your job is and what the or and then like what the organization what of like who signed you yeah to focus on your job and it, it, it i mean i've i mean like i've talked to guys like who have like i'm mean like who have like slept in their cars mm-hmm. like for seasons and i mean like because i've uh i have a buddy he uh in 20 i believe in 2018 or 2017 he was drafted in like the 40th round like way far down and he got, he was playing for, for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. And the only way that he could play is pretty much like if his whole family, like, like, like paid for him so he could like eat and sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but then he ended up um, like having to hang it up because of the financial reasons. So it's like my question, like for that is like, what if, these players do have those um, supplies for the housing, food, and then they can actually focus on them playing like on the field. So now like with the big, I mean, like I call it like a win. So like, so like with the big win um, with the MLB teams having to provide housing, Mm -hmm. I'm like, how much stress like, is that going to bring off the shoulders of like the minor league players? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're 100 uh, percent spot on there. And if you think about these minor leaguers who um, I know that even the top draft picks, they, they still got to yeah. pay for their food. They still got to pay yeah. um, for their housing. And, and though a lot of them will kind of room up together. But at the, at the same time, if you're worried so much about the financial side of life, yeah. can you really put in 100 percent effort? Exactly. To putting your best performance out there. And you have to, because when you're in the minor leagues, if you don't play well, you're, you're not going anywhere. And then exactly you become exactly. one of those, you know, uh, lifelong minor leaguers and it just never pans out. So I think this is going to be a huge step in uh, alleviating some of that stress and maybe even the mental side of things where a player can realize and just kind of feel good about it, knowing that, that part of my life is taken care of and I can just focus on what I'm supposed to do, which is be a baseball player. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, like it, it, uh, so, I mean, like if you think about it, okay. Like, so I pay, okay. Like, so I live in central Washington state Mm -hmm. and I live in a studio apartment and rent is $750 a month. So let's say that I have the $750 paid for by my employer that 750 bucks i can put towards food which will help me become a better athlete Mm -hmm. and just the nutrition and and also like and also a gym membership i make to stay fit and like all the the necessities to be a professional athlete i can use a 750 dollars towards that but it's kind of like it's I believe it's going to change baseball. Like just that small little win. Yeah. But I, I mean, like, but there's, I mean, but there's still like a lot more to go. I mean, like the fair mm-hmm. pay and all that stuff, but it's, it's, it's just one 
It's one big step for mankind. <laughs> Neil Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, most minor leaguers they make less than fifteen thousand um, per year. Do the average. The average is six thousand eight hundred per year. That's wild. And I think the the bigger, the higher draft picks kind of skew that number. But six thousand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're playing four or five month seasons, that's basically a thousand, a thousand dollars per month. And you um, only get paid when you play. So then you got the off season to worry about. Right, so, right. You see like, all the time minor leaguers hear. getting jobs um, at, at grocery stores or Uber yep. driving. And um, it's it's wild. So I think this is, I don't know why this took so long to happen. <laughs> you know, like greedy owners, man. Greedy that's owners true. That, that, that are in it true. for the wrong reasons. And yeah, owners irritate me so much when it comes to baseball, uh, not spending all of that. And it trickles down. Did you see that? I think I might have asked you this already. Did you see that article article about Oakland and like the sandwiches that they were giving their minor leaguers? And it was 100% yeah. circulating all over all over social media. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was there was a um, so so my very first job, I was a bat boy for uh, the single A uh, Diamondbacks team. So it was nice. the Yakima Bears. And uh, so then, I mean, I was like 15, 16 and. And then I would have players like ask me, I like to go get them like a hot dog, like from like, and then like from like the concession stands. Mm -hmm. I was, I was like, I was like, what? I was like, why don't you just go get it? Yeah. And then, I mean, but it was because like, like they weren't provided food. Like they had to pay their own money and they would be like pulling out like dollar bills and like change. So I'm like, you guys are professional athletes. But then like later on in life, like I figure out like, hey, like, like they really actually needed those dollars. Like that's what mm -hmm. they lived off of. Yeah, that's it's true. It's true. Uh, and I don't think there's been a plan yet set in place on how it's going to look, whether yeah. it's going to be a stipend or if each team is going to have like a, almost like a dorm room kind of setup. Yeah. Uh, I'll be interested to see, see how, how uh, the details come out of, of this, but um, it's going to be huge. I think it's gonna be really, I think we're going to see a lot of, a lot better play in the minor leagues, mm -hmm. um, especially from these, these guys who don't make the, that much money. And yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to be good. I'm, I'm happy. Um, I know like organizations like more than baseball um, are out there who are really um, trying to be a voice for these minor leaguers. Um, oh, for sure. To really uh, bring their cause to the front, to the forefront. I know there's a lot of baseball players um, who are also, you know, trying to um, be a voice for them. Yep. I think it's, I think it's really cool. Um, tell me more about more than baseball. Cause I know that's an organization that, yeah, for sure. Um, that you're, you're uh, not, I don't know. Are you a part of it or just associated uh, with I'm, it? I'm just kind of like the, I'm like the fanboy of the whole entire right on. not nonprofit. Yeah. So I, I, uh, so I got in contact with uh, Jeremy Wolf. So he's their uh, he's their director and um and i had him on my podcast and i mean because like, i was i was very like I mean, like i guess i was kind of like i didn't really like understand the whole like the minor leagues and the, like issues and we talked for like three hours it was insane so and i mean like i had really no idea like of like how much money they made like the miners and then i talked to him and we went through the like everything and I'm like, this, this is not right. This is not fair. So he, so, so like before I talk, I guess like, like about like more than baseball. So he actually, um, so he played for the Mets organization. Oh, okay. And uh, he, so he hurt his back and then uh, he got a call and he couldn't even pick up the phone because he was hurting so bad like from playing and it was the Mets releasing him and then he's like okay like, so what do I do now oh, no and it was kind of like and then like from there like he was just like this, this is not right mm -hmm. so yeah so I mean like like so Jeremy um uh Sl Slade Heathcott uh Simon Rosenblum Larson um I mean like even like like my buddy uh Jonathan Perrin I mean like they've all like they've all experienced like this whole thing i mean like so like 
Simon still plays like in the Tampa Bay um, uh, yeah. organization and then Slade. I mean, like he was, he was a first round pick. Like I, like he was the pick after Mike Trout. Oh. Like it, yeah. Yeah. But I like they they all are amazing people and they all understand like the whole um, problem, like in minor league baseball. So, uh, so more than baseball, they, um, so they're a nonprofit and they, um, they give uh, the resources like to players uh especially the minors um i'm like for i mean like for like the financial help like for the off season like to help um like plan like with with like the guys like who do get the bonus money mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um they 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 have guys like that will help them budget that money like so they oh, have good have financial it, like, aid all th- and stuff. Yeah, exactly. or financial advice i guess not aid. yeah exactly yeah so my uh yes yeah, so Jonathan Perrin, so he actually, um, so he's a financial advisor and he went to school and he did all of that. And that's what he like specializes in is helping these guys like, like budget their money, like, so they can have money like for the off season. And it's, it, and Slade, he, he pretty much runs like, I mean, he's like, I mean, like I've been told that he's like the most busiest guy because he's like always helping out people. And it's, it's, it's very it's awesome. Yeah. It, like, yeah. M- like they supply like the resources. I mean, like for like school. Oh, wow. I mean, like, okay. yeah. I mean, like, like what do you do? Like after you're done playing and you decided to go play a professional baseball instead of go to college mm-hmm. and then you're done playing after what was like the average minor leaguer plays for four years, then they're done. And then you, so, so you graduate high school play for four years and then you're done you have nothing on your resume Mm -hmm. like what do you do like i mean like because these employers don't really give a shit if you played minor league baseball Mm -hmm. like they're like okay cool yeah so yeah so more than baseball so they help out guys um like with stuff like that and it's awesome like housing and yeah it's it it's really cool that's awesome and like i said and like we had talked about this is going to be so so huge for for the minor leagues and oh for sure it's um, massive. Just, yeah yeah and i think it's only going to go up from here i think there's going to be more pay coming soon hopefully um, yeah. i think there's going to be a lot more i think i think for a long time there wasn't really like a spotlight on what was happening but yep. even more so now there's a lot of things coming out um where you know people are more aware of what's going on and hopefully these these rights these wrongs can be righted um uh, hey Mason, I do want to thank you for coming on. Um, oh, yeah, go yeah, ahead, sure. yeah, of course, anytime. Um, go ahead and shout out your podcast, um, as well as maybe uh, what guests you got you've had on, or or what's going on in the future. Because um, I know we're heading toward the off season uh, yes, of baseball, which is crazy. Because I'm like, well, I just it just started not too long ago, and here we are already um, one series away from the World Series, and that's going to be coming up here in a couple weeks, but. Uh, what do you got going on with your podcast? Uh, loaded bases podcast with, I, oh, actually, I, I, I think it's just called Loaded Bases with Mason Hall. I don't even know my own podcast, <laughs> but it's, but like, but it's lo- Loaded Bases with Mason Hall, and okay. uh, yeah, I, I just talk to players and we uh, like players, coaches, media guys, fans, just about their stories and journeys to where they are today, and uh, I, I don't know, I, uh, I recorded a. I recorded a interview tonight with a guy and then tomorrow I got one and then we're just, yeah, dude, we're just cruising, just trying to come up with content. And I know that you and I are, have been yeah. talking to, with some big ideas and yeah, just going from there, man. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so you're, you're just going to go nonstop all off season and always, I love that. Same here, same here. And, uh, like you said, we're going to be trying to collab a little bit here and that and here and there throughout this, uh, throughout the off season, try to, uh, come up with some content you know uh, content creation is the name of the game right yes sir uh, just more content putting out there um, but hey mason again thanks for coming on i do appreciate that i always enjoy uh talking to you especially about the minor league something that yes sir um i'm interested in i just haven't i'm not as aware of as yeah. how I, as much as i want to be so i do i always appreciate you um giving some of that insight too um you have a great rest of your day and i'll talk to you later yeah you too man all right right on there, bye.